Hey guys, it's Jonathan with Southern Drone Ops. Uh, if you've watched any of my content, you've seen me talk about like a Department of Defense contract for like a chemical detection payload or something I had NDA on I couldn't really talk much about. Well, that's what's behind me right now. Um, I was contacted by SSI, Spectral Systems Integration, about a year ago, and they said they had this payload, they needed to be able to carry it. Um, they had kind of stalemated a little bit because it had a plane, they usually had to use like a plane or a helicopter. And with this, we can use a drone now. So they contacted me and says, hey, is this something we could kind of modify? So in AutoCAD, we made a mount and modified the skids and have done a lot of test flights, a lot of testing with it. And it's like, hey, it actually works. You know, one of the problems with uh, the you know, detecting chemicals and particulates in the air that are you know dangerous fumes or dangerous chemicals on the ground is the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. They have one plane for the whole country, so it's hard to have that plane where they're where it's needed. So for smaller scale disasters or smaller scale problems, it they don't really get the response that they need. So this is something that's going to fill that and. <clears throat> they contacted me because we can actually get a dual use out of these drones because you know we're spraying agriculture with them i've worked with cities counties municipalities to set up their drone programs to where they can spray you know parks and cemeteries and roadside and you know spray what they need with a drone and so when ssi saw that they contacted me and they said hey you know you do unique projects you thought about doing this and i never in a million years dreamed i would be doing something like this so i said you know hey let's give it a shot let's see what we can do so i actually uh started down that we we you know built an autocad we've been testing it here in jonesboro arkansas and have had some really great responses from it to, to essentially it's been greenlit now we're going to go to market with it nda's up we can talk about it we can have all the publicity we want about it and that's what we're trying to get out now today we're doing the last test flight in arkansas after that we're going to go to another location uh that one is um just um and I will talk about that one. But eventually we hope to have this in front of as many state capitals, maybe even DC at one point to see what we can do with this chemical detection payload because it's amazing. Uh, it's just, you know, think of a, an explosion or a natural disaster. Typically, you know, you've got, you know, days or whatnot before they show up to, you know, really look at, you know, what's going on and where the chemicals are and where the fumes are. If this happened, like say here in, in Jonesboro and the city was set up with this, someone could have been out spraying a park and then, oh no, there was an explosion at a major factory here. There's all kinds of fumes everywhere. We need to detect it. That payload unbolts pretty much with, with four different um, bolts and swaps the payload out. It goes from a spraying drone to now in a disaster and emergency response drone that's able to monitor, I mean, in live time, where the chemicals are, um, where they're going, uh, on the ground, where the fluids are spreading to, and that'll help us evacuate people. That'll help us hopefully prevent so much damage to the environment, I mean, potentially millions and millions of dollars. And for the cost of this sensor and the drone and all of that, I mean, we're, we're talking of a, a tenth of the cost of even just an airplane. And that was the issue before was that when they were using airplanes and helicopters, you have to keep pilots and you have to keep them with so many hours to be able to uh, fly this in the event of emergency. But with my plan and what I've came up with for my program, the employees of the city or county, whoever's going to have it, they will be using these drones daily, so they'll be have they'll have their flight hours already, and then in the event of emergency, hopefully never, but or once a year, Lord knows, hopefully not twice a year, but when it does happen, boom, they swap the payload over, and then they they go straight from they were spraying, you know, whatever cemetery, and then now their disaster response feeding live data of everything that's going on from the air to the uh, person that's in charge of the disaster, the disaster response director. So uh, go ahead and follow me. We're gonna go over and get a little closer look at this. Uh, we're gonna be flying today. You'll see some footage from it. We've got a pretty good crew out. We've got a few of our apprentices here. We've got Grace and our first pilot. Um, we've got three, we've got uh, three from SSI here that are uh, the, main, the three main people. Right now we're getting everything set up. You can see the modified T40. Uh, the sensor is right there in the middle. It's uncovered. It's got blue wires coming out of it. It does have a case that'll go over it. That'll affix to the bottom of it. Um, and we are doing some more testing on it today. It's, it's really essentially ready to go. So, so as we see here, 
this is a toolbox so this is nothing special so this is the case for it and then this is the sensor we don't want to get too close to it there's a lot of proprietary things they have in there that's the modified t40 we have for it we're looking at um, other drones that we can also use to modify we got a little dino hanging out in the background um, so the sensor itself is roughly around 60 pounds uh, with our agriculture drones you know dry wise we can carry up to 120 pounds or so so it's about half the weight uh, the plan and I've developed and come up with we are able to have almost like a spraying operation to where we have our generator our charger we do quick charging to where we just charge the batteries over and over and over so uh, it'll fly a set pattern that we're going to put in the controller and then it'll come back land swap the battery out send it right back up so we can get continuous monitoring for 10 12 40, as long as we need it um, I've sprayed with these for you know 14 hours straight and nothing overheated so I think with that we'd be able to monitor the disaster for a very very long time um, but like I said this is my passion project this is something I've been extremely excited about and now it's come to fruition we've been green lit I'm excited to start meeting with all the cities and we've, our first one's gonna be a pretty large city that is gonna purchase um, the sensor a uh, pretty good amount of drones uh, they're gonna have us consult to actually train their city employees or their employees to actually how to use the drones and then Rick and his team will provide support for the data uh, that is pulled from if there's a disaster or you know when the sensor is in use Rick and his team will be able to assist them with that data processing and and uh, settings and things like that so we just tried to offer you know a complete package to whoever wants to put this out I mean one it's got a, a great use a daily use for spraying you know uh, like I said in my town I've sprayed cemeteries I spray trees roadside ponds stuff like that so cities can employ these spray drones themselves and we have the aviation attorney that's able to set that up for them through the FAA so that program set up right I will take care of the equipment, the education, setting that, their employees, everything up, and then Rick and his team will take care of the sensor and then all the post support with it. So it's just, we wanted to offer a complete package to people. And, you know, this is a, you know, one that's great for the environment, just in case there ever is an accident or damage or anything to it, we can monitor it, but also we're battery powered. So we're not gonna be using gas or anything like that, uh, other than for the generator, a very small amount to run this equipment. And then also we're gonna save, the cities will save because they're gonna be using it to spray. And it's gonna do a much better job than a backpack sprayer or a tractor or a roadside rig or something like that so uh, that's going to be a, a pretty good thing to offer to people and this should be the first video to put out and uh, if anybody has any questions anybody wants to see a demo anything about it send us a message and we'll be happy to uh, talk with you and see how we can help you This is at 86% we're taking off. Well, they so these batteries discharge 5% a day until they... Yeah, so these batteries discharge 5% a day down to 60% for conservation and to prevent swelling and damage. We've got rain. I can't tell if that's coming northeast. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna be close. We're gonna we're gonna get. No, we're at 66 now. We started at 86. Yeah. 
about twenty percent. That's so. That's why when I told when I did all my it was you know it was 11, 12, 11 to thirteen you know, minutes that max. Very first one that we did, uh, SSI battery. I just assumed it was like a gasoline. It, might not it have may been, not have been. It might yeah. Have been like that. It saved or something. We right. did charge them two days ago. Right. So, so yeah. they pro all these usually start around ninety percent unless we're quick charging. Right. I really. Yes. Are we on number four? Yes. No, number no three. three. No, we're on three, yeah. We're on three. But the, the winds are very, they're a lot higher right now, too, Rick. They're a lot higher now, too. So that's what it is, is I'm fighting. Yeah, we're about, yeah. We're a little higher, plus the winds are uh, about 15 mile an hour winds right now. So that's why we're, we're draining faster, too. Yeah, it's about to come get us. Uh, oh, good call. Yeah, well, go grab it. We don't need any more. You can just hand it to me. Uh, Grayson, you can uh, put that one in your left hand, I guess, and start just packing stuff up. What did you tell me the percent was? Uh, it was 86 to 66 to now we're getting close down to.